Hello, my soccer universe. I'm sorry to inform you, it's officially over. The fairy tale, I mean. Union Berlin are not for in first place anymore. And instead of them, it's Big Bad Bayern, who are finally atop the table again. And I got a feeling it may stay this way until the end of the season. Uh, the remarkable thing is that Bayern looked a little bit shaky just a month or so ago. Um, and then they found a new number nine. Uh, they, f or they figured out, or uh, Nagelsmann figured out, maybe if we play with a number nine, we actually might look better. And yes, you don't have a Lewandowski, but you have Chupo Moting. And suddenly they have again this focal point and suddenly it looks a little bit more Bayern-like from what we were used to. Uh, interesting stuff for sure. However, the best performers over, at least to the stats that I'm coming is Wolfsburg, and that's why I'm wearing this Wolfsburg jersey back when they were still a good team because they had Oliver Glasner as a coach. Speaking of Coach Glasner, Frankfurt seeming is really turning out to be a good team again. However, um, they did not record two wins this time around because they were largely undone by the referee in the home game against Dortmund and we all focus on that. It was almost enough for me to tag on the Bundesliga with the Austria video last time around. I then decided due to time constraints I really cannot do that so I will talk about this uh, time around for sure. Speaking of Austria, yes Taking it on, yes, Lask lost and it was actually deservedly so and yes, I'm hiding their jersey behind me because honestly, this was a little bit of a disappointment. You thought they will, all the signs were pointing that you can get a result at Rapid. And as always, I had a bad feeling going in, in, into this one um, because it would be too good to be true. And yeah, it did not turn out to uh, be good at all because they didn't show up. They didn't play the game. They let Rapid dictate what they want to play and that never ends very well. And on that bum note, <laughs> I don't want to start in Austria this time. I actually, since we have two weeks of Germany to cover, I really want to start in Germany. Here are the results from the last weekend of October. And while Werder Bremen, who uh, winning against Hertha is per se remarkable, I think the first one is, of course, Bayern 6-2 destruction of Mainz. A Mainz team that, that can be a little bit of a, a bother for some people, but not for Bayern this time, time around. This was really Bayern going in Bayern mode. Uh, probably the most remarkable thing is that the first half saw two penalties uh, missed slash saved uh, and then pulled in by a rebound, namely through uh, to Manet to make it 3 0 for the third and even stoppage time Widmer uh, um, um, taps in a Burkhardt penalty. The goal scorers you had, like everyone from Bayern, uh, got to share in. You had Gnabry, you had Musiala, you had Manet, you had Goretzka, you had uh, Matthias Tell. And you had Chupo Moting, good old Chupo Moting in there as well. So uh, really, really interesting. And Chupo Moting getting the start. And you would not have thought that he's a real Bayern player, but at the moment he is a real Bayern player. He is a regular for Bayern. I find this rather uh, remarkable. Last season we would have uh, spent a whole lot of time talking about Leipzig against Leverkusen. However, uh, this time the sign was completely different because Leipzig is uh, trying to find its footing and Leverkusen still have to get out this huge valley. Uh, uh, now under Xabi Alonso and it was only gonna go one way and it was um, very much going Leipzig's way who threw uh, Christopher Nkunku, who else, and Timo Werner who then injured himself in the Champions League is out for the World Cup get the two goals so uh, Leipzig again uh, on a good way going forward and a pretty remarkable win for Stuttgart over Augsburg um, and remember that one Augsburg take a very very early lead uh, that is an equals in the 15th and then stoppage time Anton uh, gets the winner for Stuttgart and that was a win that they sorely needed. This is I think only the second win so far uh, because Stuttgart definitely want to avoid relegation now that they're rebuilding their stadium for the Euros. And again, if you haven't seen it, uh, it uh, you don't see it in TV, but if you see it on the close, the behind goal shots, you see that the main stadium is completely torn down or, or partially torn, torn down to rebuild it looks 
rather old, almost a little bit like a war scene. Uh, Wolfsburg, of course, against Bochum having no problem. And finally, and Niko Kovac maybe getting some momentum going. Uh, after a horrible last season uh, where they needed to find themselves, they also needed to uh, get going there. However, the big one was definitely Frankfurt against Dortmund. This was a, a truly top game where Frankfurt probably wanted to kind of uh, make a challenge for a top four spot. I mean, now they're playing the Champions League as Europa League winners, but they were not top four. And they missed out on top four the season before still under and uh, the Hütter. And uh, the game did not really go their way, although they controlled large parts of it. But Julian Brandt uh, gave... Um, Dortmund the lead, more or less with the first real attack, but however, Kolomiani uh, then assists Kamada and um, Frankfurt really had the control over the game and honestly should have gotten a penalty. In the box, I mean, uh, we can discuss, maybe there was, the ball was outside already, uh, but uh, the, the ball then hits the post. It comes off and I think it was, uh, what's his name now, the Danish striker. Uh, Lund, Lundgren or whatever, Lindström, Lindström, Lundgren. <laughs> uh, Lindström who wants to uh, get to the ball and pull with the net and Adeyemi just shoves him in the back, shoves him in, in, in the back and I can't even see that at first uh, this might not look like a foul if you see it about uh, that because you know they were going uh, for, for it and Lindström falls onto the, onto the ball and it's a handball. Not even that ridiculously. I have less problem with the referee not giving the penalty in play. What I really have a problem with that VAR did not intervene. Because the decision to give a free kick for handball, for an attacking handball, was already ridiculous. But then if you look at the replay, I think that I'm almost convinced if the... Um, a uh, player would have gone with the foot in and uh, hit the player, then they, they would have intervened. But the shove, the referee should, should have seen it. So, so didn't even, I think there was a completely miscommunication. But it was such a botched call that uh, the referee even later uh, admitted, yeah, I should have given a penalty there. This was a 100% penalty. And I'm telling you right now, if Frankfurt scores that penalty, that game ends as a win for Frankfurt. Because Frankfurt were so much better and they had Dortmund on the ropes. And so it comes as you almost would have expected. After the half, Dortmund said, okay, we, we were lucky, Musio Koko plays to Bellingham and it's 2-1. And I think then Frankfurt only hit once the crossbar uh, and that was that. Uh, Dortmund played it then home safely for a really, really, really big win. Uh, uh, definitely a setback for Frankfurt. But on the other side, Frankfurt very much concentrated on the Champions League because they the big final in Lisbon. So that also did, of course, play a role. They could refocus and we know now that they successfully could refocus their, themselves. Um, also dramatic was Union's 2-1 win over Gladbach. Uh, Gladbach had taken a, a lead through Elvedi. Union had two goals disallowed. One that would have made it 1-0. One, one. The 87th would have given them a go-ahead through Trimmel when Behrens had equalized in the 79th. And you thought that the game is going uh, to end in the tie and the uh, stay up top will end. And then uh, Doki heads it in in the 97th minute with the last kick of the game. Wild scenes at the Alte First Array. Gladbach reeling because uh, they're also going a little bit towards the sideways. Freiburg also continued a good run with a 2-0 and Köln against Hoffenheim. Yeah, 1-1 one, one again. Köln um, still playing high energy, but I think having the extra matches in the Conference League, which they are now uh, eliminated, might have hurt them a teeny little bit. Uh, coming to new um, in the past weekend, a new week, I was about to say, uh, Gladbach beat Stuttgart 3-1. Then, remember how Augsburg lost to Stuttgart? Uh, pretty much the same way they lost at home to um, Frankfurt. However, I gotta say, this was a much more deserved loss. Uh, Mergen Berisch in the first minute already gives the lead to Augsburg. And uh, Frankfurt had to shake themselves, but uh, Sebastian Rode and equalized in the 13th. And then they take over. It takes a little bit, but Ansgar Knauf in the 64th gets them the winner for Frankfurt. Again, Frankfurt establishing themselves uh, up there. And most notably, Mario Götze is actually a real force for Frankfurt. So much so that 
and I'm sure that the squad has already been announced um, uh, by the time I post this video, but he is in discussions of being in the German World Cup squad, which I think is a pretty remarkable comeback, seeing how he was a non-factor for Bayern Dortmund and he rebuilt his career at PSV. Speaking of Dortmund, uh, it was the Musa, uh, Yusuf, Yusuf Mukoku show. Two wonderfully taken goals in the ninth and then the, in, the, in the stoppage time. Uh, Gio Reyna converting a penalty really, really well. And those are players that I think 17 and 19 or something like, like that. It was really great stuff. Bochum missing a pen, uh, have having a goal this this allowed as well for an offside call. But uh, Dortmund playing at home in the last home game of uh, this year. And then Bayern, um, again, Chupo Moting. Scoring a double in the 37th, 38th, uh, after Musiala had already given Bayern, Bayern the lead, and you think they're cruising. <laughs> but uh, shortly after, Luka Bakke pulls back into the pen, the penalty by uh, David Selke, 2-3 just before the half, and you thought, ooh, it's on. It's on, no. Bayern played it relatively safely home, only in stoppage time. There were a few danger, uh, slightly dangerous moment, but uh, Hertha couldn't get a shot off, and so in the end, uh, Bayern hang on. Another remarkable Bayern story is that Manuel Neuer uh, revealed that he had had a few operations because of skin cancer, which is also uh, remarkable, but he is fine, and one would expect that he will be the starting goalkeeper for uh, Germany. Uh, Leipzig 3-1 at Hoffenheim. Uh, that, that was also a pretty nice goal in there. Uh, Wolfsburg no problem with Mainz, but Mainz already had a little bit the uh, after being beaten by Bayern, now beaten by Wolfsburg, you wonder a little bit, maybe the break will come for them. And then Schalke also cannot get anything going, losing uh, in the duel of the promoter teams 2-1. However, the big result is Bayer Leverkusen against Union 5-0. It is over. Only on Berlin are not top of the table and anymore. And what's even more amazing is that this was a nil-nil at the half. And then Andrich, Musa Diaby with two, Hlosek and Baka make it a route for Leverkusen. And this goes so against the grain because only on Berlin had all the bounces going their way. But even their coach said, we're not playing like a first place team. Uh, it does not. It, it is very much deceiving. We might be um, top uh, 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 you know, a uh, Europe uh, qual qual qualifying for Europe, but not even Champions League because we are not good enough. We we hold any possession, we uh, don't convert our chances, and, and so on. We, uh, we we just have lucky lucky bounces. This time the lucky bounce did not go that way, and you really wonder if this is the um, spark that Leverkusen needed. Yes. We have only two rounds left, more on that in a little bit. Um, but Leverkusen definitely were reeling for most of, of the time. But they had actually a rather successful week by just staying in Europe. Now, uh, being getting the win at Union, will they start on a roll and sweep up the table? I would expect so. I don't think that Leverkusen relegation can have similar to Gladbach. Around this time last year was also a relegation, seemingly a relegation candidate and never went in there. And then the match that ends with Freiburg asserting themselves as the number two in the country uh, with Michael Gregoric uh, assisting and scoring uh, in the second half to beat Kern. Probably a game that you would expect Kern to lose, but um, now the results are starting to not go all the way, so it's a dangerous position that uh, they find themselves in. Uh, looking at the overall standings, as I said, only on uh, only third. The points uh, are really, really cool. It's 28, 27, 26, 25. We have 24 is missing, and 23, 22, 21. Uh, it is still very close up top. However, when you look at goal difference, there's one team that really sticks out. And if we look at the performances, I mean, they're not, you, you can see they have the negative bar there. So uh, Bayern is actually not doing as well as uh, they should. Makes the league though a little bit more interesting. But I think from this is probably the point where we'll see just Bayern going uh, next level. Um, Werder Bremen flying high as well. I want to point, point, point out. Whereas Frankfurt, uh, Dortmund, you know, uh, will Union, Freiburg, maybe Leipzig, Leipzig those, those are the teams that will go for the Champions League spots. Uh, as a current already dangerously low there, I don't think they will get in a relegation fight, but um, maybe getting out of Europe not the worst thing for them. As for relegation, uh, the last two are pretty set on with Bochum and Schalke. 
So it's only who will go in relegation and that might not, well, uh, nerve wracking might not be so because a uh, bad thing because Bundesliga team, teams have been relatively good as of late in staying in the league, especially when you see who uh, is has playing uh, in relegation. But uh, Werder survived it, Köln survived it, Hertha survived it, um, sometimes by the skin of their teeth, uh, but overall in the end it always looked rather uh, good. Um, and that's exactly what we see also in the expected standings, that the bottom two, Bochum and Schalke, unfortunately two Ruhrpo Giants, two blue teams will most likely go down. Up top we have Bayern, Dortmund, Leipzig. In Leipzig, as I said, we are already uh, up in the Europa League spots and they, they are expected to go even further. And in Freiburg, Frankfurt, Union probably for the uh, remaining um, European spots and of course we also will see Uh, who will win the cup because that might open up another spot there as well. With Stuttgart, Augsburg, Hertha probably go, uh, battling for the relegation spots. Köln again, dangerously low at the moment, but still on the safe fish side. We have a midweek round starting Tuesdays. Uh, I hope the video posts before that. Uh, with, you know, Bayern against Bremen. This sounds top class Bundesliga. I would... But anything but a clear Bayern win uh, would be a surprise. It's actually the first Bundesliga game that I ever saw live in stadium. Uh, we have actually a pretty big one between Stuttgart and Hertha because Stuttgart will need the points. And then we have, of course, the Ryan Derby on Wednesday between Köln and Leverkusen. Where Köln desperately need, need points. Uh, Frankfurt could assert themselves against Hoffenheim. Leipzig Freie Freiburg is probably a true clash uh, going forward. And I want to see if Union Berlin can bounce back and then we have the Borussia duel on the last match day before we break for the World Cup. Um, we have Leverkusen, Stuttgart, nah, it's probably not so uh, so great. Uh, Schalke Bayern, again, sounds classic Bundesliga, but this is first against last most uh, likely and I would expect a beating uh, there. However, we ended with a really, really uh, interesting Sunday slate. First, we have the Main Derby between Mainz and Frankfurt. And then Freiburg against Union Berlin, uh, the two teams that have been giving us so much joy this Bundesliga season. Um, now second and third. Don't think it will be a duel who will go first, but uh, who will continue the fairy tale, more or less. Quickly, Austria. Yes, last closed. Fully deservedly so. Uh, we had some other really interesting results in there too. Uh, we had, for instance, Hartberg Lusner only a 1-1, uh, Ried and Klangfurt 2-2, um, you know, uh, with both teams whole, holding lead. Salzburg, typical Salzburg, getting an early 2-2 lead before uh, Malone uh, can pull one back, but uh, whole, whole holding on. Uh, but the big story, of course, is Sturm Graz playing only a 1-1 at Altach, although they took an early through Kitteschwili. Um, Nuhio then uh, quickly equalized, and then they had two goals disallowed, especially the second one. Uh, there was a shove in there that completely set up uh, set, set Coach Ilze for Sturm, Sturm Graz, who went on a rant against the Austrian refereeing that Salzburg do get the calls and Sturm never get the calls, and how could you challenge uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it was a sight to behold, and I'm not happy that he had it now because you can be sure that he, in the next game he will get the call. We'll see who, who they will play next. Uh, Tirol Austria nil nil in a um, duel of teams that probably will potentially go for top, top six and Rapid Lask. As I said, Lask did not show up. I think only uh, early in the second half they had a few good chances, and probably a draw would have been a bit more than just result. But honestly, uh, you showed too little. And there were chances for a pit in there as well uh, to make it 2 nil even. So uh, it was a rather, rather disappointing affair. That I, 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 even if I won, I cannot tell you more. Uh, and it was billed as, you know, former Rapid coach Kubauer uh, going back against his buddy, former buddy uh, who fired him a year, a year ago, blah, blah, blah. It was overall a rather flat game. Interesting thing is that uh, the, one of the repeat um, leadership who has been now steps and now is rumored to go to Lask. So that's how far it goes. So in the table, I mean, still one, two, three, and Lask will stay in third place come the break. Uh, however, uh, there will be no title challenge. That's for sure. Uh, there will be, uh, it, it will be tight for uh, who will go into the uh, tops uh, in the top uh, six. 
There is Klagenfurt Rapid, Tirol and Austria Vienna and then on the bottom is also relative TFC retired but it's uh, always best seen when we look at the expected standings where we see there are four teams vying for the um, three spots to in in the uh, upper playoff and then yeah Hartberg at the moment looks a little bit down and out but again the points will be slashed in half this will be a slugfest and then the last round um, Lask against Sturm the last Bundesliga game in Pasching for Lask before they move into the new stadium but there's a cup game against Klagenfurt in there Klagenfurt have to play Salzburg and uh, half the league hopes that Salzburg uh, you know, Klagenfurt have been relatively good that they get, uh, that they get some, so, so something. Yeah, Oscar when I guess Wolfsburg a year ago, this would have been a good one. I don't think it is this time around. So yeah, that was it from me from Germany and Austria this time. Please let me know if you want to add anything to uh, be below. If you have any any, any questions, um, just shoot one message and I will do my best to answer. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!